All right. Well, it's half past, but um, we'll just be waiting for uh, people to drop on in because we've had the experience that people kind of come in um, in like a 30 second <laughs> time boxes. So we'll leave another like five minutes for people to join. All right, I feel like we can get started. What do y'all think? Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> if you do not hear us, please let us know um, in the chat. Um, we'll be doing all the troubleshooting in the chat. <laughs> um, exactly. And it's 635. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to our fifth edition of our um, UX writing and content design meetup. Um, this is the second time I think that we're doing this online um, due to the current situation that we're all aware of. <laughs> um, and it has worked, or the third time already. Third, third time, sorry. <laughs> Can't keep count. Um, so yeah, it should, I hope everything works out. As I said, we have two troubleshooters here who will um, take, listen to your messages um, in the chat if anything yeah, doesn't work out. Um, quick note here, we're, we'll be recording this entire session, so if um, you would like to not be seen, um, just turn off your, um, your camera. Um, we might be um, posting this onto YouTube um, at a certain yeah, point in time. We will see. All right, so tonight um, we have some exciting things for you. Um, first of all, I'll be doing the intro, um, and then after that, we will have Caroline here as a guest speaker. <laughs> this is Caroline Pieracci. She works at um, LEAP um, here in Zurich, where we're stationed at. Um, <laughs> And um, she is the lead content uh, strategist, strategist and UX writer here. So we're very excited for you to be here. Thank you so much. Well, thanks for having me. Of course. <laughs> um, and after Caroline's talk about um, how content drives conversion, which will be an interactive talk, be ready to um, have your phones and your, and your laptops ready because um, you'll be able to yeah, join in on the fun. Um, afterwards, we will have a, an optional, so a non-mandatory um, networking speed dating because we thought, you know, these event, events are usually here for, for doing networking and because we can't do this right now, we thought we would do um, a fun, you know, like a networking speed dating thing <laughs> where you can join if you would like to, but you do not have to. All right, so quick uh, note to us, who are we? Um, we are the uh, UX writing and content design meetup team. My name is Fiona, I'm a um, UX writer and uh, you know, creative consultant, whatever you like to call me. I work in Zurich, uh, I've worked for Janetta and at the moment I'm working for FutureWorks. Um, so I work a lot with um, text and design. This is Tam, she works at, do you wanna? I work with um, small PDF. <laughs> I'm the uh, senior content strategist, and basically, um, as a linguist, that's my background. I kind of do everything that has to do with written content, whether that's UX writing or PR or marketing, all things words. <laughs> Laura? Hi, um, I'm Laura. I'm from Bern. Um, I work at Nothing Age, and kind of at the intersection of content and design. Um, and uh, the other thing that brings me to the topic of UX writing is um, about to start a PhD on this topic, um, looking at what we actually do with words in design. There we go. So we all come from the same corner of, of life. <laughs> um, one quick last word on our sponsors, which would be Leap, which is our physical sponsor. This is where we're stationed at today. And thank you also to Nothing who is our virtual sponsor. Thanks to them, we have this uh, great Zoom meeting, which allows 100 people to join. So thank you, sponsors. <laughs> um, and with that, um, I think I can hand over to you, Caroline. Um, how content drives conversion. Yes, let me share my screen. Yeah, that looks good. Exactly. There we go. Yes, we want to talk um, 
we want to talk conversion today. And yes, this story is going to end with a with a with a buy button because we're we're going to cover the part where like people at the end will push that button. Exactly. But first, why does ah oh, yeah? First, we want to do a quick check in because we want to know who we are together with today. So please take your phone or take your computer, whatever um, you want, and put in menti, oh, um, menti.com and put in that code, and then you can answer a question. Oh, what the heck? The host has spotlighted your video for everyone. Would you like to unmute your microphone to speak? No, should you be. should be picked up. Okay, okay. then. There you go. You should see, yeah, exactly. Please let me know which country you're from. So, uh, see where people are from. Yes, exactly. Very nice. Oh, we don't see it. Oh, wow. We don't see it. Oh, why not? Here we go. No, that's working. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh wow. We have quite an international crowd. Wow. So we see votes are still coming in. Our 24, how many participants? 40, so yeah, let's see. 25 joined in. So you see the most, most of the people are coming from Switzerland, France, Germany, California. Good morning, Brazil. Good morning. <laughs> Fantastic. Cool. So we go to the next question. We wanna know who you are. Yes, you should be able to get the Menti question now and you should be able to vote. Let's see if the, ah, yeah, it's working. So we have lots of UX writers. <laughs> wow, quite some UX writing. Woohoo, yeah. Ah, designers, welcome. That's always good when the designers are interested in writing. Such an important part of the design experience. Now let's wait one more. Ah, that's super interesting. So we have a lot of UX writers today and a lot of designers. Well, everybody's welcome. And last one. So we want to know which industry are you in? Are you working for a B2C company, B2B, government, NGO, agency, or are you freelance? Or are you already mentioned? Agency. How interesting. No government, so lots of B2C, P2P, one government. Okay, perfect. So that's good because that means the topic really like the whole like I mean conversion is also important for government people, but um for B2B, B2C clients, of course, it's much more relevant. Okay, now let's go back to the presentation. So, thanks so much for sharing. So, there we go. Yes, exactly. We want to talk about your website and yeah, for sure what it is for. So when we talk about a website, we also talk about a platform or a service or an app. But um, we want to talk about what's it for from the conversion fans point of view. So, and yeah, what do you want? You want them to, to click somewhere, you want your users to read more, you want them to subscribe, to sign up, to download, watch something, but basically you want them to push that buy button. And even for government people, um, we work a lot for governments and they are like, yeah, you know, we don't sell anything. So what the heck? But if people give you money or give you time or give you their attention, that's also like, that's, that's a value that they exchange for another value. So it's also, so all the rule, all, all the stuff that we're going to talk about is relevant actually for government or NGO as well. So yeah, if you think about your website, it's basically, um, <laughs> It's very similar to what you see here. So it's a space, right? Like this market here, you have prospects that come. They, at some point, take a buying decision. Then they exchange money for a product or a service. And if all goes well, 
hopefully they become returning buyers and will start the whole process again. So that means basically your website is these people here. Um, your website is your salesperson. And actually, especially during Corona, since all stores, physical stores are closed, it's a really hard working salesperson. There's just, if you see your website, well, again, from the perspective of a, um, of a conversion fan or a conversion optimization person, um, if your website is the salesperson, there's one big problem. So there's this nice chart. It's um, Forbes published this study, most distrusted profession and yeah, salespeople. Actually, I saw the statistics for Germany too. It's exactly the same situation. We don't trust salespeople. We don't like salespeople. So here, that was another study. Um, why don't you trust salespeople? So they don't care about buyer's need. They don't know their products, only care. They only care about making the sales. So they're super pushy, super aggressive, and they use high pressure tactics. So we don't like salespeople. So we have your, your website is a salesperson, basically. We don't like a salesperson, so we want to talk about what we can do um, to change that. And the call and the answer is, of course, I'm a content strategist. Of course, that's the answer. <laughs> it's high quality content. But I mean, of course, if you have a sale, if you have to go, you go to a store, you need some new shoes. You don't want anybody who's pushy. You want somebody who is high quality and delivers high quality content. So when I look at high quality content, I like to use um, this pyramid and talk about the hierarchy of content needs. So how it usually works with the pyramid on the very bottom, you have the most basic stuff that you need and the higher we go up, the less important it is and the more nice to have it is. Um, and yeah, we wanna work our way through this pyramid. On the very bottom is number one, be useful. So yeah, be solve the pains and deliver gains. And there's this nice example. The other day, my husband had to renew his driver's license. So he went to the DMV um, website, that's the Department of Motor Vehicles in America, in this case in California, and he got this beautiful screen. And he spent, I don't know, half an hour there, and he was um, cursing, of course. <laughs> but he spent a lot of time with that, because with this complicated page, and I mean, you have these, like, you have these red boxes with like immediate attention it says, but then you also have red copy with like all caps, important, do not blah, blah, blah. You have no, you don't know where to look and it's not pretty and it's really not, this is not good UX, but he spent a lot of time with that. He really like, he, it was useful to him. It, so, it solved his problem, so he came. So that's why I like this example. Like if you have really good content, who cares about the design? Who cares about the technology and the performance? If it's super relevant, people will come like this example. But of course, we can do better than that. Um, and here, here is an example for how you solve pains in a nice way that the DMV did for my husband. This is REI, an American closing um, outdoor company, I think. And so um, they have this blog uh, with how to and skill stuff. And here, the first one is like, Pen and skin care tips for climbers. Or here's another one, how old should my baby be to go hiking? So they really found out what super useful, what relevant topics are for the user and provide a content that's really, really useful. And if you have a baby and you're really worried if you can go hiking with that baby, like even if the page would look like the DMV page, if it's useful, if it's gonna solve your problem, they would find you with that. Um, then, what I also like to say, so um, solve some pains, but also deliver gains. So this is a B2B company, um, let's see, yes, ABB, they provide energy solution by power plants or solar energy. And they have this really exhaust, like this really big blog about technology and they have expert journalists writing articles. And they really like for the people who are from the industry, they deliver good content, high quality content, and the people come and or the users come and they read that stuff and they really, they that's how they create trust and topic leadership and all that stuff. But they come because they're super useful and super helpful. So that, like that um, this be useful, uh, here it is, that 
is true for if you're a B2B company, if you're B2C, but also for a government company, as we saw with my husband's driver's license. So let's go to number two. So um, the next one is, so once you're actually useful, it would be nice if the people actually also, the users actually also understand what you're talking about. I like to use the expression cognitive, like ensure cognitive processing. And again, that example of my husband's with the DMV, like there was no way he could like cognitively process that in a friendly way because there was all these alert stuff. So um, make sure people can follow you. And the, the one that really understands that is Easter Bunny. So here you see, um, my daughter, Serafina, in the evening before the Easter Bunny comes in the morning, she puts that little pink bowl and she puts carrots in the pink bowl and some cookies. And then during the night, Easter Bunny comes, eats them, and then he leaves her a tray. And Easter Bunny knows his target group very well. So he knows exactly how to make a path that his user group, his target group here, little Serafina knows how to follow. Like it's really clear she can follow and he also or she also knows um they also know that um little children have a very short attention span so you have to keep them entertained so in between the trail there's little easter eggs for seraphina so she keeps like he, they keep her entertained and then at the end there's the big prize the easter bunny gift and so make sure your users can follow make it like do it like the easter bunny make a really create a really easy trail and maybe even some not so clever users can follow um, as in our case um anyways yes make sure users can follow here is a real life example this is frita the b2c company that um we actually work for they it's like this lifestyle brand. They do recycling bags and um, recyclable clothing. And this is a nice example on how you how to make sure your users can follow. So they it's super simple, but it's really important that we do that and we keep repeating it. So you start with a friendly picture that kind of sparks interest. And it's a bit the same like with the Easter Bunny. When Serafina woke up in the morning, there was this pink bowl and there was only crumbs in the in the table uh, on the plate that means oh wow there's something something going to happen i want to go and explore and i want to follow this trail and the same is the picture here so this is a bit awkward it's a bit strange and you're immediately like waking up the interest of the reader and they want to follow you and then have, you have of course a very simple headline big so the users immediately know where to start and then they have some simple short copy to enter and then remember the Easter Bunny, little chocolate eggs on the way, like there's some entertaining content and then really short, like you have a headline and then you have short copy because nobody reads more than five sentences these days anymore. So this is like, it's really, do it like the Easter Bunny every, I don't know, 30 meter put an egg and then pictures. So keep your people understand, um, entertained so they can easily follow and then make sure they can buy. So um, don't ever forget to put your buy now button in the content. So you give them content and then of course you want the conversion. The moment they're ready to convert, put your offer there. And don't be shy. Often we have clients, they say like, yeah, let's, let's not be too offensive. But um, if people are ready to buy, be there when they want to buy. And actually, if they don't want to buy yet, make sure the user can continue. So always have the next best action teaser, always give them more so they can continue their journey. So yeah, um, understandability, ensure cognitive processing, and when you actually are on the writer's perspective, always think that you're the Easter Bunny and you have to put a little trail for your users. Sarah Fina and our cat will be very grateful for that. Yes, exactly. Then number three, we're walking up the, the pyramid is, um, we're getting more and more specific, also more and more difficult and more and more into the craft of, you, uh, of copywriting and UX writing. Be unique or um, create identification. We have really fun examples. There's different way how you can build a connection. And one way is that you connect with your voice. 
And so um, this is the example of Mini. Um, when you want to book a, um, a test drive, that's the page that you get. And it says 48 hours of style hunting, perfect for style aficionados. So the tonality is all about urban hipsters, lifestyle stuff. So exactly the same product, book a test drive now for BMW, ready to get behind the wheel. And you see like, it's, you know, you want to get driving, you want to go and you want to, you want to, you want to get started. So it's a to it's the same product. It's a totally different tonality. It's much racier as BMW is much racier. They're not an urban hipster cars. They're like people who want to be who are competitive. You want to, they want to have fast um, car. They want to have the ultimate driving machine. And then number three is Mercedes Benz. What do they say for a test drive? They say test drives, then you'll win. So it's totally the premium feel. So it's exactly the same product, but three completely different personalities. And depending on the, the different users, they identify with different with a different direction. They res uh, different directions resonate with them, and make sure you you have a specific tonality so you attract the right client. Then another example, which I think is kind of fun, such a mundane product. Um, deodorant for men so this is x and they are like find your magic and party what makes you bold and it's all this x effect and um, then rexona um they are more like bmw actually they're get up get moving so it's much it's a really short really short copy and really also like dynamic and then the third one a bit more in the in the mercedes-benz direction is dove Welcome to Dove Man Care. Dove Man Care celebrates a new definition of strength, one with care at its center, blah, blah, blah. And so it's just, it's the same product and it's three completely different ways to identify with it. So that's how you can create a connection. Another way is of course, through your message. So once you've found your positioning, once you've found your unique voice, make sure you start talking like also you define messages. And here we have the example of um, BMW. So we said they're quite racy, they're quite sporty and dynamic. So of course they say, of course they say extreme sports or they say when driving, um, winter driving tips, drive safely on snow and ice or search for new challenges. And if you think again that your website is a salesperson, you want them, like if you have a BMW salesperson, like you go into the store, into the car dealership, you want somebody who stands for all these things and a person who actually would talk about their urban challenge, well, urban, that's, we said that's for me, their, their sports challenges. So you want that person to know about the brand and you want the person to speak in the same tone and voice and so that they are consistent and, and authentic. Exactly. So another thing, um, how to connect this through repetition. And I think we have a fun little menti thing here. Yes, exactly. Please go back into your menti and you should find a question there. Um, exactly. So BMW is using the ultimate driving machine as their claim. And I want to know how long they have been repeating that. Can you actually see my, yes, exactly. So, yes. Oh, interesting. I think we usually had 25 participants, so we wait another second. So most of the people say 20 years, 10, four. So basically I take out of that, we don't know. <laughs> and of course I have the answer. Let me see if I can just switch. Yes, I can. There we go. Uh, there we go. So they have been saying this for 47 years. Isn't that crazy? I think they actually change it now. So when I was checking, I think with the new branding, you know, the white logo, um, I think they're getting a bit away. I saw it in some countries where it's still used, but in most of the countries it's not used anymore. But last year it was still used. 
and I mean, it's crazy. So I have been saying that for 47 years. And we also, we had, um, we had, uh, there we go. Ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, okay. <laughs> there we go. So we had Axe. They've been saying this Axe effect. They've been playing this for 35 years or Nike, 32 years. And then it's, um, Nike still is going strong. We had this, they just played with it for the Black Lives Matters movement. What was it? Um, for once, don't do it. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. For once, don't do it. So they still do that. And it's really like, I think that's a good reminder that once we found our message, you might be totally tired of it, um, but keep repeating it. You can do it for 50 years. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. Um, and yes, if you think all the UX writers in the room, you think, yeah, I am not, I don't have to do that. This is all marketing bullshit. No, 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 no. Even in UX writing, tonality is totally relevant. So these are three examples. They're not from me. They're from these beautiful people. You see um, the links um, below the pictures. So the first one is MailChimp. So once you are in the experience, so this is not the marketing funnel anymore. Once you have converted to a consumer, when you schedule an email campaign, this is what you get. Rock on. That's totally on tone. Or then the next one for Twitter, um, you have to put in like, I think when you sign up or when you sign in, oh, when you sign up, um, they say now is the fun part, pick a username. This is actually just um, a quick side note for all the UX writer here, the writers here. This is my very favorite UX writing example because it shows so nicely why we're important. This now it's the fun part, pick a username. That's whoever wrote that totally understand the cognitive um, state the user in, is in. Like you need to think of a username and you're like, hmm, maybe I use like Prince Charles as a username. And that's exactly the, like, that's exactly the cognitive model that's our thing that's happening in, in the user's brain. And whoever was the writer knew that and put that on paper. So it's a little, little bit like, I, we got you, we know what's going on. And that's why we use, that's why we need writers. That's not a designer's or an engineer's or a PO's job. It's really the writer. And they don't just, we don't just write words. Like um, there's much more to it, especially those mental models. So that's on a side note. I love this example for that. And yes, and then there's also, um, I think that is Spotify. Find music you love. Um, not as funny as the other ones, but it doesn't need to be funny. The Mercedes-Benz um, example showed that, like, test drives, done your way. That's just, oh, oh yeah, okay, everything is going to be good. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to say that all the stuff that I'm talking about here, it's not only for, for marketing people, it's also for all of us writers, actually. Okay. Um, we've had this one, and we're moving on to bringing joy. Um, yes, you know, when you're useful, think of this, the DMV example, my husband for the, for the driver's license, it was super useful, but yeah, complicated, then understandable. So we had the bunny rabbit where you could follow easily, then added identification that people connect. And now we're going more and more into like the, the high art of, of content writing. Yeah make it easy and fun, create pleasure. And that can be in really, really small um, examples. Um, like, um, I call it micro delightment. And again, this is um, the Fright Tug, this bag, recycling bag company. And they have on their sales page, on their product sales page, they have these little videos. And that's just a screenshot um, where they, in this case, they um, fill their bag with PU foam. And then it just blow up. And it's really fun. Um, I would, um, I recommend checking out their videos because it's such a nice way how they, like it's just a product pr explanation. It just shows the features of the product, but it's really delightful. But you can, that's just a small way to do it. Um, you can also do it in like in macro excitement, just like in a big, in a big way. And the example here is Nike. Um, they did this campaign campaign content marketing kind of thingy where they wanted to break the two hour marathon time so at the moment the world record is at two hour two hours and two minutes or three minutes in running a marathon 
and they were like okay let's gonna let's gonna break that and we said it was a huge thing and it was like people were like oh, are they gonna do it are they, are they gonna good not do it and it's really a very pleasurable way and very entertaining way to interact with the brain um so add pleasure make it easy and fun and actually the ux writing examples they showed also like like just through tonality just like through using words in a pleasurable way, you you make it easy and fun and you make it the whole experience so much lighter. And then on the very top, and you see a bit now I'm going through the example a bit faster because the base is really important and the other stuff just comes on top. Um, yes, get real. So um, become a part of your user's life. And because once they become like a household, I don't know, utility, that's the big, of course, that's the biggest, like when you're so close to the user, I mean, there will, there will be conversion afterward. They will love you and they will want to buy from you. And there is an example we had Nike before. So then they not only have the super sporty people trying to, to break a marathon records, they also have, a marathon training plan on their website for normal people like me. So I downloaded that marathon plan. And so for months I had Nike in our bathroom where I was crossing off like my trainings and um, I involved my puppy. So my dad also ran with me. And so I became like an evangelist and I told my dad, hey, let's run together. And here is this website and you can download this stuff. And so the closer, you are connected with your people, of course, the more um, they will like you. I do actually run with um, on shoes, but anyways, <laughs> don't tell Nike, but yeah, they sell enough stuff. So yeah, exactly. So um, let's recap. Why do you have a website? So we said um, your website is basically a really, really hard working salesperson. We want to equip it with really good tools um, that they can do a good job and not um, be annoying. So um, yeah, what are the learnings? So whenever you create content, ask yourself, do you deliver true substance? Ask yourself if your page is set up properly. Remember the bunny rabbit? Then um, are you creating a unique experience? Um, do you keep your visitors in the flow? Do you keep them entertained? Do you create some smiles on their faces? And then are you part of your users? So we can basically look at what I just presented you with this, with this criteria. So did I deliver true substance? So I hope you learned something from what I was talking about in the last few minutes. Was it properly set up when I guided you through that thing. And so the idea was that I built this pyramid and I keep coming back to the pyramid. So that's how I tried to set up things properly. Also by using these real life examples and misusing my whole family, um, I was kind of trying to like set it up properly and have these the, the, the chocolate eggs, right? Then yeah, are you creating a unique, ex unique experience? Yes, I mean, you got my spiel here, right? You got me and the way I talk and all that stuff. Then do you keep your visitors in the flow? Well, yeah, yes, yeah. You know, there was a lot of examples. That was the idea that I um, keep you entertained, that I make it lighthearted. And now it's a question, how are you, how am, are we gonna integrate that in your user's life? And ta-da, there's actually um, a blog post about this. So um, if you need that, you can go Google it and you'll find this beautiful DMV example again and all the other ones. And um, I think we got a buy and with a buy button. There it is. So yeah, um, now we want to know if you bought all this stuff. And I guess I hand over to, um, to our community manager, right? <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you for having me. That was fun. All right. Well, I think I speak for everyone when I say thank you so much, Caroline. That was a, a treat for all of us. Um, so you see there are a lot of claps um, in the gallery view. Um, we would hand it over to you guys now. If you have any questions, um, please go ahead and type them into the chat um, to everybody for everybody to see or uh, personally to Lara or uh, Tamara here. 
um, handing it over to you guys. Have you gotten any questions? Yes. So there was Kara who wrote in two questions, one at the beginning. Um, actually, since we don't have that many questions, Kara, would you like to just ask, unmute yourself and ask in person? Sure. <laughs> So first, thank you very much. It was really interesting. Um, well, my first question was, um, can you please tell us a few words about yourself? Because I, of course, I read the meetup um, content, but I, I mostly forgot. <laughs> so yeah, that was the first question. <laughs> I don't know where I should, um, should I close my computer? Where should, which camera should I look at? Here? Should I yeah. close my computer? We can look in here. Um, ah, yeah, that's better. Um, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, um, well, I um, I have a master's degree in sociology and design, so I'm not coming from the writer's perspective, actually. And I started, of course, in cars um, as a copywriter in advertising at Jungfermatt in Hamburg and did their Mercedes and BMW, I guess you guessed it all, and came to Switzerland a few years ago where I first well, where I use, where I was working um, on the agency side. And I started with traditional advertising and went more and more, entered more and more the, the tech side of it. And nowadays we, I create content strategy and UX writing. And I really love the digital, the whole digital content world because you get feedback. Like when you, you know, you can measure everything, you see what, are people what like what are the search intents for certain topics so you need you know you get much more feedback and for me that's really that's really pleasurable so um what's that was that about <laughs> what you needed to know <laughs> perfect any other questions yeah there was a second question also from kira um i'll just read it out for you since you typed it up nicely in the chat. So she was asking or writing that um, she often has discussions about how much pleasure and fun B2B can be before it gets much frustrating. When you brought in that question of bringing in women of the light and it would be nice to hear your opinion on that sort of. Hmm. Maybe how, of maybe how much is too much? <laughs> have you had, had, had any experiences? that come to mind completely? Yeah, we did. I um, And I ran my time at Deutsche Telekom, which is T-Mobile for the US. We did a study where we looked at different brands and how they, how funny they are, <laughs> in which like you have the different communication situations. So from like a warning, like you gotta pay us to like big marketing and like inspiring content. And of course you have a scale, so it would always helps if, it's, if you define what are the different communication situations that my, the company has or the organization. And then you're more, we like to say like cold and blue for like more like serious stuff and very red for like the more the marketing inspiring stuff. And then you can say a bit on which scale you are and then, for example, Apple is an interesting is an interesting um, brand, or it used to be when we did that, when we made this study, because they um, they switch in between for the German speaking people here. They actually they they duzen and siezen. <laughs> they mm -hmm. so they have some like on the same page. Like I think if they talk to business people, they um, use the formal voice and to like like private people they use the informal do and so they mix which is very strange so um even so it's it's a challenge <laughs> and i think just define it properly and but then you gotta also by the end of the day you gotta feel it like how much is too much but it helps if you have if you have a scale you know where you want it in which situation you're in and how funny and how inspiring you want to be like if you have yeah if you're t-mobile and you have to send somebody for the third for the third time like a reminder that they gotta pay their bills you don't want to be funny anymore you might be friendly but we want to take it down a notch whereas when you like hey download our app you want to be very bubbly does that help 
Chris? Sure. <laughs> it's always great to hear uh, opinions about that specific topic, but that, because I think the opinions are very um, diverse, I think. Yeah. Well, usually I think, of course, that's the content strategist talking, like define it, define the rules, define basically the algorithms of what you want explain them to all the different people involved in the project and then when writing happens take back the algorithm and or the the rules and say look we did this because of this that way you can like talk to people also like what you want use examples that way you have like it's not all gut based i think that's the mm -hmm. most that's like the key thing mm -hmm. and then at least you're consistent if you're consistently too funny I don't know, that's not too bad, but at least be consistent. Yeah, no, I agree. And I think it's not only, I mean, even if you are in B2B, you still have human beings, you know, reading your website, using your application. And so I think, and it's also, there's a difference between being funny and uh, like being pleasant. I mean, it can also be, you can offer a pleasant journey without being funny. So I think there's yeah, a lot of different ways to do it. And it's really, really difficult to be funny. So if you know there is one person that is not a copywriter in the team who's going to do some writing, don't want to don't try to be funny. It's really difficult to be funny. And then um, it's expensive because you need like, you need to try different jokes and it's, like to make a pun that is easily understood by different people, especially if you also have to translate it, then don't do it. Like at many, we had to translate into 26 languages. I don't ever use humor, <laughs> like use charms, but humor just doesn't, isn't translate, is often not easy to, un, to translate and it's expensive because then you need not translators, but copywriters in the different languages. So that's also, there's also a, a practical aspects to, to funniness. So often if you know there is non-writers involved in the writing, which so often is the case, don't be funny. <laughs> then be delightful. Be nice. Be simple. May, usually, just being clear is already nice and difficult. Thank you. I think we can move on to another question. Um, there was one from Sophia was asking whether you see a correlation between copywriting and UX writing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> you can use the super pyramid for everything. Yes. I think, um, I don't think like the marketing language as it used to be, you know, the, the flamboyant, expensive, um, um, that were like, I mean, we, when I started in advertising, we spent weeks writing the perfect headline for, um, for Mercedes. And nowadays I think we don't have the time for that anymore. It's, it's, it's a different environment and, and users. I mean, of course, a good copywriting is still appreciated, but um, things are moving so much faster that the disciplines are really growing together. And I mean, again, there is scales. Copywriters are a bit more flamboyant, more inspirational. UX writers are more practical. Um, the more technical it gets, the more practicality thinking you need. But the rules are the same. Be, what was it? Be understandable. Be, oh, you should all repeat it. If you understood me well, you should be able to. And, and I think the basics apply to everybody. And the higher up you get into the pyramid, maybe the more copywriting you should get. I think. Cool. We got one more. Let's hear it. And there was a thank you from Sophia in the chat. So. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> um, just popped in. Uh, another question for you is from Alexandru on research. So how much research in terms of understanding people that you do, uh, do during your professional practice um, and just in general, if you have any advice on this topic? Mm, it's important. <laughs> And um, in my just in my practice, it usually it's done by the, the, the UX designers and I kind of we the, the content people kind of force our way into the meetings too. Because so try to always be there because as a writer, because that way the 
our experience is the constant people have a bit of different perspective on the topic than the designers. We have other problems to solve. Then um, when you listen to, your, to the users or the, the, the people you're interviewing, you're picking up their vocabulary, you're picking up their problems, you're picking up their languages. So you can actually usually, the more, the more I understand the users during the research phase, the easier it is to write afterwards. And what we did, we actually um, prepared a template with the general questions that we use for and when we do a copywriting or a content research, uh, or if we join the team. So even if we can't participate because there's no budget, so we can give them, we can sneak in our questions and we can create awareness um, among the researchers doing the research um, for the topic. Oh, it's interesting because I was going to ask you so a bit what you see as differences between writing and designing and kind of just answering that up right, right now. <laughs> it's really, I think it's really, it needs both. Um, I mean, writing is designing, designing is writing. Um, people come for content, we always say. They don't come for the nice design, sorry. <laughs> they don't come for the good technology. They really, they come because they want to solve a problem or they want to be inspired. So they come for content and it's really important that the, the disciplines work together because it's it's different perspectives and what i also see like often during the process there is like there's a research phase so the researcher do the research and the design phase and the, the tech phase and uh the nicest is when the the, the, the writer can be in all of these different um phases of a project and really like get everything together and create the, the whole thing. So in our life, in an agency, of course, that's always a budget problem, but in the ideal world, it makes sense that the writer is along the whole process. Of course, and the writer <laughs> wants to be everywhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think okay. We have another question, right, Marcel? Maybe a last one or something. One last one? Um, this is a very broad one. Um, do we live in a time of superficiality? Do we simplify everything so much that it becomes empty, whether this is a trend? I think maybe you could talk a little bit about whether you think there's something as too much simplification um, when you think about this thing with the Easter Bunny, the path needs to be simple, but is there something where the path can be too simple or too obvious? Actually, I think with, with um, thanks to analytics and thanks to um, SEO and organic traffic, I think it actually is the opposite, where people have a specific thing that they're, I don't know where to look, should I look at you, should I look at the camera, um, I look at the camera, um, people have a specific thing that they want to find out about not just general buy our shoes they want to like oh i always have pain when i run or i want to run a half marathon up the mountains and they don't they don't like look at advertising anymore they really i think advertising I and mean, of course i'm not in advertising anymore and that's why because people don't want it it's not right if it's not relevant for them they don't see it so um people google stuff and then they pick whatever solves their problem. So I think it's the opposite is true. So we become more and more specific in like, yeah, the salesperson, you don't want the salesperson when you enter the store just yelling at you, we have everything half price or you want them to understand what you need and bring you exactly understand what your problem is and find the perfect solution for you. And so I think in my experience, it's really the opposite. So we find out what are the search what are the keywords people are using um, in the world out there and how can we answer their searches? So, uh, of course, I'm interested whoever wrote that question, what your opinion is on the matter, because that's an interesting thing to discuss. I would say it's the opposite. Um, but I also see the arguments for what you say. Um, ask question, questiony. I mean, if uh, if the person who asked the question would like to say, <laughs> give his, his or her opinion, go ahead. If not, that's okay too. 
Hello, I'm Alexandru. I've put that question. I'm from Romania. I work in uh, branding and design. I have a small agency. Uh, a few days ago, we organized uh, a global um, conference and uh, someone from TikTok was there and uh, she spoke a lot of uh, about the campaigns that TikTok um, uh, created uh, in this time of uh, coronavirus. And uh, we saw many examples. They were very nice. Also, Mercedes uh, was there in uh, TikTok. I really felt that everything was too simple, too childish. And uh, I was just curious about uh, how you see this thing, about superficiality. I think it depends. There are brands that are uh, going in the right, right direction, understanding well the, the persons, the clients, but some of them are going to things that are things that don't have any more substance, don't have any more uh, meaning. It's, it's, everything uh, became uh, just for fun and just for uh, seeing something. So without without uh, something uh, powerful inside, it depends. I think good quality uh, design and UX design and branding have uh, have meaning. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I don't know what your opinion on that is. Um, well, I totally see that too. Yeah. And also, like, if you just answer, if you just answer the, the demands that the people have, we can't innovate. So um, should Mer like, if you just, yeah, I see the dumbing down. If you just look, what are what are people searching for? And then you're just at. So I'm not talking from the advertising perspective or the social media perspective, but from the content marketing perspective. And there is like, yeah, I mean, we, we do research and see what are people looking for out there? What are the topics that are relevant to the users and can we produce topics that, so if they Google that stuff that we come on the very top of the ranking and, and then, I mean, how do you create new stuff? How are you innovative if you just answer the crowd? That's never a good solution. So I totally, I totally see what you mean and I see the danger in it too. So there's really both sides as usually. <laughs> and and I like I like the whole so I don't yeah I don't do push I don't do push stuff anymore I do content marketing so I answer the content that we produce intent like intends to answer search intents people google stuff and we want to answer because that's how we think we can create a trustworthy salesperson but if yeah if, if they're just yelling and there's always people who listen but that's not how I choose to to go towards the people. But I see there's, yeah, the pros and cons and there's both directions at the moment. Yeah, I think that would be the bottom of your content uh, pyramid, you know, like be relevant or yeah. like be, be yeah. useful for, yeah. for the people, yeah. listen yeah. to what they need and then yeah. kind of react to that. Yeah. But I also understand that he, like during this Corona times, people just like the news are so depressing. You just want to go to TikTok and just like see people do the dance. I mean, there's also, <laughs> That's that's a basic human need to to like shut down once in a while. Even I like I would like to watch TikTok videos once in a while and it's fun. And it's like, what did I just do the last 15 minutes? And then so that's a, a human need too. It's not what I do in my work, but I also see there is there's not only bad for that, we also need recreation and um and yeah, yeah. All right. All right. Well, we just went from from content to Easter bunnies to TikTok. So, oh yeah, <laughs> that was a very. Uh, I, I think that is a good way to to end this talk today on um, how content drives conversion.